Hello, uh, I'm Elias and in this video we are going to continue with uh, unit 5 and uh, this is our unit, our session 6 of unit 5. So here we are going to look at uh, government intervention in the market and specifically for uh, this video we will look at price controls. Now in the uh, next uh, video, we will cover the taxes as well as, uh, we will cover the taxes as well as the subsidies. Okay, so let's begin with uh, price controls. So uh, the free market uh, may not always lead to the best outcomes uh, from the side of the producer as well as that of the consumer or even society in general. Remember that if you leave the market to operate on its own, it means that the forces of demand and supply are the ones which will be determining the price and therefore the quantity that will be uh, obtained from the market. But in the case where such outcomes are not optimal, it calls for the government intervention to correct the situation. Now, the government intervenes uh, uh, via two forms, or the government intervention in the market through price controls take uh, the price ceiling form, which is the maximum price that is charged, or the price flow, which is the minimum. So the ceiling is a maximum, and the flow is the minimum. Now, for these two terms, uh, think of a house where uh, above your head you have uh, the roof which has the ceiling. And therefore, the ceiling is considered to be the maximum price that will be set. And for the floor, think of where you step when you're in the house, which is the floor. And therefore, it is considered to be the minimum price that the firms can charge. Okay, so let's uh, look at the price ceiling. Uh, now, the price ceiling is a legal maximum price imposed by the government to help reduce the price of certain commodities. Now, this ceiling is usually imposed to encourage consumption of certain commodities. This is a price which is set below the equilibrium point such that no a firm is allowed to charge a price above that a point. That's why we call it the maximum price. No one is allowed to exceed the maximum price, but this price is set below the equilibrium point. So consider the price on the vertical axis and the quantity on the horizontal axis and our demand curve, which is downward sloping, and the supply curve, which is upward sloping. If we have our initial equilibrium uh, point where we have price P and then the government, so remember this P is a price where the forces of demand and supply have determined and that is the market price. But if this price is not optimal in the sight of the society, the government may intervene by reducing the price or cut, uh, putting this price below the equilibrium price, say, to P max. So this P max is the controlled price by the government. And therefore, the output, the gap between uh, where the Pmax is meeting the supply and the demand is what we call the excess demand. So the uh, implication of setting the price below the equilibrium price is that we will have a shortage in the market. So let's look at uh, the examples of uh, uh, the, uh, the ceilings. The first one is the rent controls. So government may attempt to impose maximum prices on rented accommodation to ensure affordable accommodation for all those who may be of low income brackets. So in other words, the government wants uh, to encourage people to, uh, to pay uh, and acquire uh, good houses or rent good houses. The other one is uh, the step of food. So government may set maximum prices in agriculture and food markets to ensure low-cost foods for poor people. 
and lastly we can consider the credit card uh, interest rates where the government can set the maximum interest uh, that banks can charge on credit cards so all these are examples of uh, uh, maximum prices that the government can charge uh, in each market and remember that the government is uh, imposing this price to encourage consumption okay so let's uh, look at uh, some of uh, the government uh, attempts what the government can do to attempt uh, in reduce i mean what the government can do to reduce the shortage so the government can solve these problems through either shifting uh, the demand curve to the left now remember if the government is to shift the demand curve to the left it means you may have to consider some of the factors that affect demand so for example if the income of the consumers was uh, our income of the consumers was to reduce that means if uh, the commodity in question is a normal good then the demand curve will shift to the left if the income uh, uh, for example you can also affect the price of related commodities so in uh, ensuring that more of this is purchased the government may impose a higher price on other on other substitute goods so that this commodity can be purchased and as such you will see that what will happen is the demand will shift to the right but to reduce that back to equilibrium it means the government will then have to increase the price of this commodity and therefore this will uh, take us back to equilibrium but this would defy the purpose for setting a maximum price and therefore we should be very careful when we are setting the price below the equilibrium the government may also shift the supply curve to the right by either uh, giving a subsidy or going on the market by and do the direct provision so this is where now the government would have the actual commodities and then give to the people as opposed to uh, pushing the price at the maximum level or the government may release previously stocked uh, items which it had bought and piled up in the warehouses and therefore giving these out will shift the supply curve downwards and to the right okay so the other option could be the rationing uh, scheme okay so here we can uh, take the case of uh, the coupon where the government may decide to impose the actual amount which will be consumed in the market and this could be simply by setting the uh, the bounding uh, portion so the government may say no one is allowed to uh, buy two bags of millimu uh, uh, maybe for, for each family and that means the government is trying to ration the consumption of millimil and this is usually done if the quantities are in short supply then we also have the opportunity cost so if government spends more money supporting such industries it may have to reduce spending on other areas like bridges and railways and so what this would uh, do is that if the government really wants to uh, promote consumption of certain commodities for the government to do the direct provision it will have to forego the production of other activities and this is what we refer to as opportunity cost if you recall from our unit uh, two uh, three opportunity cost is the value of the best alternative foregone or the amount of something that must be given up in order to produce more of the other item let's now look at the price flows now a price flow is a legal minimum price that can be charged for a good now this being a minimum it means it's a price which is set above the equilibrium price and as such no one or no single consumer is allowed to pay a price below that uh, minimum price and therefore in most cases such a price is set to encourage production and therefore it's uh, set to pro, uh, protect mainly the uh, producers and so the price flow is imposed above the equilibrium price and results in a surplus of a product 
Now, common examples include maybe soya beans, the milk, and the minimum wage, where the price has been set above uh, the equilibrium uh, price, and therefore no one is allowed to uh, pay a price below that, and this is to encourage production. Okay, so let's take uh, the price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis with our initial equilibrium at point P star and the quantity consumed or quantity uh, supplied at the Q star. If the government decides to intervene in this market by setting a minimum price, say uh, P min, which is above the equilibrium price, then we will have a surplus on this market. The gap or the distance between A and B is the excess supply because producers are now encouraged to produce more and therefore supply more on the market. Recall that a price, uh, a higher price is a motivation for firms to supply more items on the market because their motive is to make more profit. So if the price has been set above the equilibrium price, then firms will supply more on the market. However, for consumers who view a price as a discouragement for buying commodities, for them, they are going to reduce the quantity demanded. And as such, the distance between A and B, that is the gap between the quantity supplied and quantity demanded, at uh, the minimum price P min becomes the surplus on the market. Now, how would government eliminate the surplus? So in attempting to eliminate this, government may consider buying the whole surplus. And if they do the, uh, that, they will have to stock the items. Now, in the case where the surplus is bought, there are a number of options available that the government can uh, take with the stock. The first one is that it can uh, keep the stock in the warehouse, but however, some items which uh, some, uh, some items such as the fresh items, say milk, may go bad. The government may also decide to destroy the items, but this will be wasteful. Who would want to buy items and then destroy them unless you have uh, many resources? But even that, it will mean the government is not rational. The government may also consider exporting the items to other countries who are in short supply of such uh, commodities or even to uh, nations where the items are already uh, in good supply, but supplying, uh, exporting them at a cheaper price. The only implication with this is that the importing nation may consider such a situation as dumping and therefore it may not be welcomed. The government may also uh, consider giving these uh, the excess uh, sub, uh, the surplus to other nations uh, in terms of assistance or simply as aid, but this will encourage over dependence on such nations. Okay, so we should note, therefore, that price controls lead to what we call the deadweight loss, which is the loss in the welfare. So let's consider this uh, uh, in detail. So uh, in details, where well, we will first look at uh, the case of uh, consumer surplus and then uh, producer surplus and see how we, uh, we land at the deadweight loss. So let's first start uh, by looking at the effect of price ceiling. With the price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis and uh, our demand and supply curves meeting at price P0 and quantity Q0, we have the producer surplus, which is uh, the area uh, or the triangle bordered by the supply curve and the equilibrium price. And uh, we also have the consumer surplus, which is the area below the demand curve but above the equilibrium price. If the government sets the maximum price, which is the price below the equilibrium price, we are going to have a P1 price, and at that price, we will have quantity demanded reducing to Q1, while quantity supplied will be above. And at that price, at that price, with quantity demanded reducing uh, to Q1, we will have the deadweight loss, which is the triangle formed 
after you have uh, you have uh, noted your Q1 and you extend this line above until where you will meet the demand curve. This will happen because the firms will only supply this much, which is up to Q1, whereas uh, the consumers will be wanting to get more from the market. So as such, the equilibrium price set at P1 will lead to uh, the quantity of Q1 supplied and therefore there will be a deadweight loss. Okay, so the effect of a price flow with price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis with our initial equilibrium price P0 and quantity Q0, we notice that uh, if uh, we have the producer surplus uh, which is below the equilibrium and the consumer surplus above, and then the price is set above equilibrium, which is the minimum price, it means that then only Q1 will be demanded by the uh, consumers but however, the firms will supply more and this will create a surplus on the market. However, if only Q1 has been demanded, it means that then we are going to have the deadweight loss, which is the loss in welfare, because no one is going to get this part of welfare. It will be lost because consumers will only buy up to uh, Q1. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, please send an email to moaoelias at gmail.com. I'll see you in session seven where we are going to conclude government intervention on the market and there we are going to look at the effect of taxation.